years, I ended up going through my series tracker and realizing just how many series I am currently in the middle of. Now, I've done this video before in which I have basically read books in order to try and get through series that I'm currently in the middle of. We're doing it again. We're doing it again because it has really hit me <laughs> just how many I'm currently in the middle of. Now, I do have a series tracker. I'm gonna put it up on the screen for you guys now so that you can see. Now, if you look in the top right, I do have two boxes that say total series and then unfinished series as well. So I currently have 47 series that I'm in the middle of and then 29 series that are unfinished. So I've now scrolled down. Like I said, this is quite like a intense tracker. I have a lot of books on here. But if you look at this tracker now, I do have three books that I've highlighted in white, which are the books I'm gonna read with you guys this week. So the first one that I wanna get to, I feel like I read the first one of this in a reading vlog and I said I wasn't a huge fan and that I wanted to continue the series because people say that it gets better the further you get into it. So the first book that I'm gonna read this week is Ricochet by Kristen Becker Ritchie. This is the second book in the Addicted series. I, again, like I said, I have read the first book obviously and I liked it. I gave it three stars, but I didn't love it. And so I wanna try this book. It's really short. I've heard again, it gets better the further you get in because I guess you get more attached to the characters themselves. And I'm hoping for some character development in this one. That is what I have been promised. That is what I'm looking for. So I'm hoping that I'm really gonna like this one. Now the next book that I'm gonna read is an interesting one. I did read the first book in this series and I didn't love it. Again, I feel like I disliked that one more than I disliked Addicted to You. I didn't dislike Addicted to You at all. I was just like middle of the road on that one. But the first book in this series, I did have a bit of a dislike for. I did. I'm gonna read Collided by Lauren Asher. Now, I love Lauren Asher. I have read, I think, majority of her books other than this series. And I have loved all of them. I mean, I don't think I've given any of them like a five star, but I've given them like solid four stars across the board. And so I was really excited for this series. And like I said, I read the first one and was just like, it wasn't for me, babe, it wasn't, but I have hope for this one. The tropes in this one, I feel like are sitting more with my vibe. It's another Formula One romance. Like I said, I am a Formula One girly. And so when I read the first one, I was a bit like, I don't know, some of it was just, <laughs> it was cringing me out a little bit, but I'm hoping that this one, obviously we're following different characters. The tropes are a bit more to my liking. I've got my fingers crossed for this one. And then finally, I have a series that I literally started this month. So <laughs> it's very much more of a recent one. Those other ones I started quite a while ago, but this one I started this month. In my brain, I thought this was a duology, but for some reason I now think it's a trilogy. So correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's now a trilogy, but I read the first book in this series in a vlog like two weeks ago when I read Subscriber Favorites and I really liked it. I gave it four stars. We have Ruthless Fowls. Rebecca Ross. This is a sequel to Divine Rivals. Like I said, I really did like Divine Rivals. I ended up giving it four stars. We end on very much a cliffhanger. So I'm very intrigued to see what happens in this one. This is like a, it's kind of like a YA fantasy romance. There's like magical typewriters they write to each other. There's like a war going on between gods. It's really cool. I just think the concept is so cool and it reads so easily. The writing is gorgeous, but it reads really easily. It's digestible. I always say I'm not a YA girly, but this one for some reason really, really works for me. It doesn't read young whatsoever. It doesn't read like a super high difficult fantasy but it's just like that lovely middle ground that's just really easy to understand but also really interesting so I'm very excited to read this one as well. So that is my little stack of books that I'm going to be reading this week. I'm so excited for these. I feel like they're all books that I have very high hopes for so I hope I'm not let down. I think I'm going to read them in this order so I'm going to read Ricochet first then Collided and then Ruthless Vows and we're just going to see how it goes. So let's skip on to me reading Ricochet. Hello how are we all doing? I have had a day. I have had a day. Actually, I'm gonna move this around a little bit because I feel like you can see, you can see what my day has consisted of. I have reorganized my bookshelves. Um, I don't know when, I feel like you're gonna see this video before you see my reorganization video. So I'm gonna try not to spoil it too much. Um, it isn't a rainbow anymore, which feels really strange because I've only ever had a rainbow bookshelf, like ever, literally ever in my whole life. Um, it's been an ordeal. I don't know if I like it, we're gonna have to see how I get along with it. But yeah, I need to check in with you. This was my main thing. I need to check in with you because I am halfway through Ricochet by Kristen Becker Ritchie. I am really liking this one. I'm really liking this one. So I don't know if you guys know the lore <laughs> of like my previous experiences with this series. So I have read the first book, Addicted to You, I believe it's called. I have read Addicted to You. I gave it three stars. I liked it, but I didn't love it. And I went into this series thinking this is gonna be a five star series for me. Everyone loves this series. Like everyone's given it five stars. And so I think I went in not really knowing that it's one of those series that kind of built up. So like when I said I didn't love it and I gave it three stars, I actually spoke to some of you guys in the comments and like via messages. And basically everyone said that this is a series that grows on you and that like it gets like better as you get further into it. So I was then excited to pick up the rest of the series. I was gonna pick it up anyway, but I was excited to pick up the rest of the series because I was like, okay, the further I get in, the more I'm gonna like it. And here I am really liking this one. I don't think it's a five star or anything like that, but it's giving like a solid four. I'm really liking it. It's so short, which is really, really helping because I'm flying through this. Again, I'm gonna check. I'm reading this on my Kindle because again, hi, I'm Ellen. I basically only read on my Kindle. 58% of the way into this book. And that was done in like one sitting last night. Really liking this one. If 
you haven't read this series or haven't heard of it, essentially, at least in these first few books, we follow Lily and Lo. They are both addicts to different things. And basically they kind of enable each other to have these addictions. And we are following their love story. So they're kind of best friends. They were fake dating for a while, kind of so that the outside wouldn't, I guess, see their addictions because they kind of let each other indulge in their addictions and then pretended to be together so that they could get away with doing that. And then this one is kind of a continuation of their love story. I don't really want to tell you obviously what this one specifically follows because I don't want to spoil anything from the first book. But yeah, we're just continuing their love story and their kind of struggles with addiction, I guess. And I'm really liking it. It is one of those that's like kind of more hard hitting, obviously because of the subject matter, but the writing is really good. I just like the vibes that this is giving off. I'm just, I'm just having a really good time. I'm having a really good time, so I can't really complain. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to update because I feel like I can't really say that much because it's a sequel. <laughs> which is going to be the same for every book I read in this video. I'm going to get in the bath and I'm going to finish this book. Um, I've had a day. I've had a day. It's Saturday and I tend to do obviously my filming at the weekends because I work during the week and I've been filming left, right and centre, babe. I did my bookshelf organisation, which took probably at least five hours. I also filmed an unhaul like while I was doing it. So I have a stack of books. I don't know if you can see them like this stack of books here are books that I'm unhauling. I also filmed like updates for other vlogs. I'm kind of in the middle of about a million vlogs. So it's just been a day. It's only it's literally half four. Tell me why it's like, I mean, it's actually not that dark. I feel like it's not coming up that dark out for like on this camera. It's quite dark outside. It's, it's, it, the day is over. <laughs> the day is over. And I feel like I've done loads, but I've also done literally nothing with my time. It's been a day. I'm going to go continue reading this and I will check in with you probably when I finished it. Cause again, I'm 58% of the way through. I can see myself finishing this today. I have such like high hopes for this month, for the reading vlogs that I'm doing this month. I feel like I've overdone it. I feel like I've ever done it. I have this vlog, obviously, where I'm finishing series. So I have this book, I have Ruthless Vows, and I have Collided to read as well. So I have, to be fair, all of those aren't like difficult books to read. But then <laughs> next week, I'm doing a reading fantasy for a week again, because I feel like I love fantasy, but I don't talk about it all that much, at least in my like videos. So I wanted to do another reading fantasy for a week. And I, the books that I've chosen, babe, who do I think I am? Who do I think I am? Reading Prior of the Orange Tree and also two other books in one week. Ellen, man, what the f I don't know why I've done this to myself. So I'm trying to read these books like as quickly as possible so that I can have like at least a week and a half to read those other ones for my fantasy vlog. I don't know what's gotten into me. I really don't. I'm gonna skedaddle. I'm gonna go get in my bath and I'm gonna read the rest of this. I have no plans for this evening. I also have no plans for tomorrow. So this is what I'm gonna be doing with my weekend. I'm trying to get the least amount of my bookshelf in the background of this because I don't wanna spoil it. Anyway, I went and had my bath. It's like two hours later. I have finished Ricochet by Chris and Becca Ricci. I really liked this one. I liked this a lot more than the first one. Not that the first one was bad by any means, but I did like this a lot more. I think nothing, well, I don't wanna say nothing happens in this. This is a bit more of like a, I don't know, a bit more of a chill one than the first one. I feel like more happened in the first one. Stuff definitely does happen in this one. It's still hard hitting, but I feel like it was a lot easier to read, if that makes sense. It's a short one for sure. And I feel like it was just like, I don't know, chill, nice and chill. I really liked the progress that Lily made in this one. We don't see much of Lo, but we do see a lot of Lily and I think that her progress is really good. I think one of my things with the first book was obviously because it's like a continuous series, you're not gonna see everything happen in the first book, but it, the first one was like very much an introduction to their addictions and like you seeing them enabling each other. And then this one, you finally start to see, I guess some progress to do with that. So seeing Lily's progress in this book, I really liked. So yeah, I really liked this one. I'm glad that I've ticked it off. I do really want to read the second one now, but I'm going to move on and read Collided next. I'm going to try and read that this evening as well. But I really liked this one. It's growing on me. I feel like I am going to like it the further I get in. And oh my God, oh my God, please tell me that Connor and Rose have like a, they have a book. I'm going to research this. Desperate to see their story. I think you see them a lot in the background of this book and also in the background of the first book. And oh my God, oh my God. So I think from my research and from what it says on the front of here, I think the Calloway sisters is the one that follows Connor and Rose, right? please tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but I'm excited for their story. I hope that they have one. I'm sure that they do because I hear people talking about Coloco Ball all the time. So I feel like he must have his own book because people are fangirling over him. Um, but I think Calloway Sisters Kiss the Sky is like the first one in that series. And you're meant to read it after Addictive For Now. So I'll read Addictive For Now and then I'll read that. Slay. Okay. Exciting. Either way, really liked this one. This series is definitely growing on me and I read it very quickly. I always balance you on books and then get upset when it's wonky. Like what do I expect? Literally what do I expect? If you're on a wonk, it's not my problem, I'm sorry. That's just how it is. Right, 
I have a check-in for you guys. I feel like I have so much to talk about. I'm like brimming, brimming with things that I want to speak to you guys about. So the first thing that I'm going to address is the fact that I'm halfway through Collided. I think I'm like just over halfway through, really liking this. I'm really, really liking this. And I'm so glad because obviously I read the first book. We all know this. I didn't love it. This is so much better. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm just liking the characters more. I feel like that's part of it. I feel like I just much prefer the main male character in this one. The dynamic is just so much better. It's kind of more of like a friends to lovers situation. Like obviously they meet, he's this like famous F1 driver. She is the daughter of, I think one of the team principals, I can't actually remember, of an opposing team, right? And so they end up meeting and he's like this cocky, funny, like headstrong, I don't know, there's something about him. And they end up becoming friends and their friendship is just really beautiful. And I just, I just think it's great. And I love a friends to lovers story. So it's not like a childhood friends. It's not like a long time friends, but they become friends first. And I just really, really like this. She's also got this like bucket list of things that she wants to do. She's not very experienced in life. And I feel like she's been pretty sheltered by her dad or whatever. So she has gone along with him to go along to all of these F1 races in the calendar and just like live her life. And her like best friend turned, I guess, lover in this book. I just... Oh, this is so cute. This is so cute. And there's something about a really, really cocky main male character. I'm sorry, there just is. And I'm loving it. <laughs> so this is giving me very much at least a 4.5, if not maybe even possibly a five star. We will have to see how the end plays out, but it's giving me low-key five star feels. Low-key, low-key, maybe a 4.75. I don't know, but I'm loving this so much. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's hitting me. It's hitting me. And I was sat reading it last night and I was reading until like 2am. You know it's good when you want to go to sleep and yet you're sat reading until like 2am. Like I, I don't stay up that late most nights and I was just addicted. I was like, I need to read more of this book. I just, it's great. So thank you very much to Tierney, one of my gorgeous friends. She ended up gifting this book to me and I feel like I wouldn't have gotten to it as quickly as I am had she not gifted this to me. So Tierney, I love you, you know that, but this is just, it's doing bits for me. I also wanted to show you, I ended up buying a book. I literally just went book shopping. I probably should have vlogged it um, so that I could show you guys, but I didn't. Um, but I went book shopping. There's this really cute like independent bookshop in the town over from me. It does like secondhand books, but it also does new books. It has like a coffee shop. It's really, really, really cute. So I ended up buying a book. Let me go grab it first because I'm saying all of this and then I don't even have the book to show you. I feel like I've said this before, but one of the main reasons why I love reading so much is because my dad loves reading. And so he actually ended up going into town yesterday and he came back and he was like, oh, I so nearly bought you this book because it looks like it's your kind of thing. Like, I feel like you would have loved it, but I didn't end up getting it. And so I said to him today, let's go to, let's go to this independent bookshop together. So I went with my dad and we ended up finding it <laughs> in that bookshop. So I got God Killer by Hannah Kana. I don't really know what this is about, but it does sound up my street. It's like some sort of, there's this girl and she, I think she can kill gods, but then she meets one that she can't kill. And then we follow the story from there. It's like a fantasy situation. I believe it's an adult fantasy. Yeah, it almost sounds like she's an assassin, but like for gods, it says, as a child, she saw her family murdered by a god and now she makes a living killing them and she enjoys it. Slay, I guess. <laughs> But this cover is also literally so gorgeous. I've seen it kicking about for a hot minute. I've not actually seen anyone review it. I've seen a lot of people haul it, but I've not seen a lot of people review it. So I don't know what the general gist is, but it sounds like it's my thing. So we went book shopping. I picked this up. I can't really complain. I do want to do a video. I am doing a video next week where I'm going to do like a reading fantasy for a week vibe. I do already have my three books planned out for it, but um, if I have time, which I probably won't because I'm trying to read like 2000 pages in a week, which is going to be really something, but... Maybe, maybe. If not, I will include it in a later one of those. I wanna do more of them because I feel like I've had a lot of questions or like comments recently like, oh, do you read like fantasy? Do you like fantasy? And I love fantasy. I just don't, I don't know. I feel like I've not included it in a lot of my videos. So I wanna try and do more reading fantasy vlogs, if that makes sense. I wanna do more vlogs in which I just read fantasy because I do love it. And I feel like this is the time of year for it. I feel like these like depressing winter months, I just wanna read fantasy because <laughs> I feel like it's like almost escapism, right? Anyway, I also had another, <laughs> I had another thing that I wanted to talk about. I literally made a note on my notes app about this because I've said this like a million times. Again, I'm not going to harp on about it, but I have been on booktube now since I was about 14. Not making content, but watching content. I have been a watcher of booktube since literally 2014. 2014. And I, I saw a post. I saw, I believe it was a Twitter post and it was a photo of like a display in a bookshop and it was like the OG booktube books. And it just sparked something in me. I was like, oh my God, I remember that era 
so vividly and so I literally started making a list of books that I remember being so popular back in the day and I want to discuss it I want to discuss it because if any of you guys were around in like the peak of like 2014 2015 like booktube you will know what I'm talking about I've literally made a list of books I've literally made a list of books the first one Anna and the French Kiss does anyone remember that book I remember that book being literally so popular everyone loved it everyone was talking about it I feel like you couldn't go onto a booktube video without hearing that book and I I think that was like one of the first ones that I bought because of booktube and I remember loving it at the time and I just I saw the cover of it and I was like oh my god like a visceral reaction I was like I have such vivid memories of that book like that whole series it was like Isla and the Happily Ever After, Anna and the French Kiss there was like I think there were three or four in that series and I ate them up also do you guys remember Hush Hush do you remember Hush Hush it was like that angel book it had like that grey cover with the guy with the wings I remember that book as well I remember literally hearing so much about it on booktube and then picking literally seeing it in like a secondhand shop and I was like I need to own that and I bought it I don't I don't remember literally anything about it I believe that's a series as well but that was like one of the OG <laughs> booktube books i hope that some of you guys are relating to this i hope some of you guys have been around for like 10 years like i have because these were like i don't know it just it itched something in my brain i was like i, I don't know it was just it's like memory lane memory lane another one do you guys remember throne of glass but with the original cover like the cover with the girl on it. i'm gonna see if i can find a photo of it like the teenage girl like the blue cover the teenage girl on it that was like the og one because i read throne of glass when it first came out i didn't have this edition because i believe this was the american one but i read throne of glass like the year it came out <laughs> and i remember this cover so vividly because that's all we had and when it first came out we were expecting it i guess to be like a standard i don't know fantasy trilogy like ya fantasy trilogy look where we are now look where we are now but i just saw this i remember seeing this cover again i think it was in that photo i think someone had made like a, a a picture like a almost like a mood board right of all of these book covers and that was on there and i was like does anyone remember that were any of you guys around for that let me know i have the selection as well i feel like the selection has been doing its rounds again i read that again when it came out i think i got like all of them in like a box set and i loved that i ate it up that was like my first introduction into like regency but kind of like romance but it was almost kind of like a competition thing i loved that i ate that up when i had my like i had a bookstagram back in the day i had a bookstagram like in this era like 2014 2015 and my i remember my bio literally being how much i loved maxon who he's he's like the main guy like the prince in this this series what a time to be alive what a time this also kind of links into shatter me shatter me has been making its rounds but do you guys remember it in like the 2015 era do you guys remember that because that was like all the rage back then because now it's got like 10 books or something ridiculous like it's a long series but i remember when it was like the original trilogy and people were so obsessed with it i remember seeing like bookstore vlogs like release day bookstore vlogs because people were going out like on release day to go and get like the next book in the series i have read the first two books and i didn't like them so i haven't carried on the series but do you remember that? I feel like it's making its rounds again. Everyone is reading Shatter Me at the minute, but I feel like that was like an OG one as well. And then the last two, Snow Like Ashes. Does anyone remember Snow Like Ashes? I feel like this was another staple one. I owned the whole series. I think I only read the first book, but I owned the whole series and I used to love this cover. And then I feel like it looks very similar to An Ember in the Ashes as well. But do you guys remember these? Maybe all of you guys are recent watchers of BookTube and you are not understanding anything that I'm putting down here, but I hope that I at least have some people that have been kicking about for a long time and that recognize these books. Also, Red Rising. Red Rising is one that I feel like has come back recently. That was like a proper OG one. The Kiss of Deception series as well. Do you remember that? Oh my god, there's so many. There's so many. I don't think I even own any of those books anymore because that was such like, that was 10, 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago. That's insane. Anyway, I just went down a rabbit hole yesterday and kept thinking of all of these books that I remember being like such staple booktube books. So I want to know if any of you guys were around for those times, if you read any of those books, especially I want to know if you recognize that Throne of Glass cover that I'm on about because that's like stapled into my brain. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to shut up for now. I'm going to carry on with Collided. I'm hoping to finish it today. It's currently a Sunday. I'm hoping to finish it today. I read the first half really, really quickly. So I'm hoping to get to the rest of it. Loving this could be a five star. Who knows? So yeah, I'm going to crack on with that. And I will check in with you when I have like my final, my final thoughts. I'm really hoping it doesn't go anything below like a 4.5. I don't think it will, but I have my fingers crossed. I feel like I look like a little pixie. <laughs> God, I look so odd. Anyway, I thought that I would check in with you about my final thoughts and feelings about Collided while I curl my hair. That is why my hair is currently looking like this because I'm about to curl it and I just have like the top half <laughs> tied up. This is just not a look for me. It's not babe. I, I look 12. Anyway, right, let's carry on. I need to give you my final thoughts and feelings on Collided because I have finished it. I ended up finishing it literally like a few hours ago and I loved it. 
I really loved it. I didn't think that I would. Again, I have had this conversation like 15,000 times about the fact that I didn't love the first book, right? I feel like that's a known fact. I feel like everybody knows that. However, this was so much better. I just feel like the relationship was so much cuter. Liam is the F1 driver that we're following in this one and he's really cocky, but he's also a complete cutie pie. I feel like that's what made the difference in the first one. I think we followed Noah. I'm pretty sure his name was Noah and he was cocky, but in like a bit of a like a cringe way, like in a bit of an insufferable way, for me personally at least. And so in this one, Liam was really cute. He was full of himself, but he was cute. And their relationship was very much friendship based first. Like that was their first thing. They were friends prior to anything else. And I just think it was really sweet. I really liked the idea of the list. She had like a bit of a bucket list going into summer because she's had like, I guess a bit more of like, not necessarily a sheltered life, but she doesn't feel like she has lived her life to the fullest. And so she wants to complete some things off of this list and he helps her and it's just really sweet it's really sweet my like main issue that I had with this book was that it was very cringe in places I feel like I don't know when this book came out in comparison to her other ones I feel like I always check the front of the books but then that tells me when the edition came out as opposed to when the actual book came out so I don't know when it came out in comparison to her other books I feel like it was obviously one of her earlier ones but I found some of the writing to be very cringe like some of the way that they spoke or like some of their little internal monologues that they had like he was always like my queen and stuff and I was like oh babe I just can't do it I can't do it so some of those things and like the big professions of love and stuff I don't know they were written in a way that made me cringe they were written in a way that made me cringe but I have pretty much next to nothing else to complain about about this book I just think it was really fun I think it was really sweet it's one of those that is really really quick to read I powered through it in like two days and it's given me a lot more hope for the rest of the series. I'm so glad that Tierney ended up getting me this book because otherwise I feel like I wouldn't have picked it up for a while. I definitely would have at some point. This is when I start to look insane. <laughs> Anyway, I feel like I would have picked it up at some point, but I feel like it wouldn't have been quite as quick as it was. Anyway, long story short, this was really sweet. He's kind of cocky. It's definitely got spice in it. It's the F1 stuff for the most part is correct. As I've said a million times now, I'm an F1 girly. I'm not like the be all and end all of F1 knowledge, but some of the stuff like she calls the drivers racers. Like, I don't know if any of you guys watch F1, but mostly people call them, they're just like drivers, they're not racers, which isn't obviously a big thing whatsoever. It just feels really funny. And she calls them pre's instead of Grand Prix. I said this when I read the first one. She calls them pre's, not Grand Prix. Um, I've never heard anyone reference them as pre's other than Miss Lauren Asher, which I guess each to their own, but it just makes me giggle when I read it. I don't know if I actually told you what rating I gave this. I gave this a 4.5. I think I said in my like previous clips that I was considering a five, but I feel like some of the cringy writing and the nature of the third act breakup did kind of irk me. So that stopped me from giving it a five, but it was still a 4.5. This was really fun, really cute. I don't know. I feel like I don't have that much more to say other than I really liked it. I would recommend this series for sure. I think you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit when it comes to the F1 stuff. If you're like a proper F1 fan that knows everything, I think you need to kind of let that go <laughs> to read this, but it was fun. It was cringe at times, but it was fun. I just, I had a good time. I feel like that's all I have to say on the matter. <laughs> that is my hair all done. I feel like I did a very <laughs> half-assed job of that but I, I don't need it to be perfect. I'm all done with Collided. I now have one book left to read and that is, I always forget the name of this book, Ruthless Vows. I want to say the sequel to Divine Rivals. I am very excited for this. I did read the first book literally like two weeks ago. I vlogged it. I really, really liked it. I gave it four stars. And so I'm very excited to see what this second book is like. I feel like mostly people have said that it's not quite as good as the first book, but that it's still enjoyable and fun. And we ended on a cliffhanger. So I would like to know what happens. If you know what the cliffhanger was, I would like to know what happens. I'm going to read that. I'm going to spend the evening reading reading. I have no other plans. I have so many books that I need to read in the next few weeks. So I am going to cram this in. It's currently Monday. So it's going up literally on Sunday. Usually I give myself a week, but I've given myself like two days to read all three of these books. So I'm going to try and sit and read this. Also, I literally just got this from Amazon. I <laughs> sat on my old one of these. I had like quite a big claw clip that I really liked. It's like that matte texture. It was just plain black. And I sat on it the other day and I broke it. And I love them because I use them all the time for my hair when I'm doing like curls or whatever. And I got this one off Amazon and it's huge. It's huge. I don't have super long hair. I have kind of thick hair. And so I find it really difficult to find a claw clip that holds it all. Stunning. Anyway, I'm all talked out. I have finished Glided. I really liked it. I'm gonna move on to Ruthless Fowls and I will check in with you when I have some thoughts on that one. This is me like desperately trying to find an angle that doesn't give away my bookshelf too much. I mean, 
mean, does it matter? Realistically, no. But also I have a whole reorganization video coming out, so I kind of don't want you to see. But also I guess you've already seen. So we're just gonna roll with it. And let's check in with you. I'm halfway through Ruthless Files. Now I am gonna be getting ready for the gym. I need to go to the gym. So I'm gonna do like a two in one while I talk about my feelings for this. So I'm reading this kind of in tandem. I'm doing it with like my physical copy as well as my audiobook. And I'm really liking it. <laughs> I'm really liking it. I genuinely thought, I said this before when I read Divine Rivals, I thought Divine Rivals isn't gonna be my thing. Like I wasn't, I wasn't convinced that I was gonna love Divine Rivals, mainly because again, as I say, every single time it's YA and I don't tend to read YA anymore. However, it just works. This just works for me. I really liked the first one. I gave the first one four stars and this one is looking like it's gonna be following the same trajectory. This is so fun. I really like the plot twist that we had at the end of the first book. And it basically just picks up where we left off from the first book. So I feel like it was perfect because obviously you want to find out what happened at the end of the last book and when you pick up literally from where you left off, phenomenal. I thought I would wear my <laughs> F1 hoodie <laughs> because I read Collided in this video. Anyway, I'm just really liking this book. I think it's really good. I think it's really fun. It's reading really, really quickly. I just think that the world that it's set in is so fun. I just think it's fun, fresh, gorgeous. I haven't read a book similar to this in a very long time. It's making me want to read more. For every single time I read a fantasy, I'm like, oh, I just want to read fantasy all day, every day. And I do love fantasy. I feel like obviously on this channel, I mainly talk about romance and I would say romance is my favorite genre, but fantasy is very, very close up there. Like they're almost tied with my favorite genres, I guess, to read. I would say I read like, I would say I read mainly, obviously, romance and fantasy and then the tiniest, teeniest bit of things like thrillers, but 99% of my reading is fantasy and romance. So I just, I'm just having a really fun time. I'm having a really fun time. This book is so fun. I don't know, it's like scratching an itch that I had to read fantasy and to read, I guess, digestible fantasy. I am doing a vlog next week where I'm reading purely fantasy for a whole week. It's just scratching that itch. I just wanted some sort of like fun. It's not necessarily like a light fantasy, but it's not It's not high fantasy by any means. It's not difficult to understand. It's She's perfect at the minute. It's not a five star. The first one wasn't a five star. This isn't gonna be a five star, but it's gonna be a good four star, I have a feeling. So I can't really complain. I'm having a good time. And this is a duology. So this will be me finishing a series, which is gonna be also very satisfying. So yeah, I'm gonna head off to the gym. It's Wednesday. I work from home, but I go to the gym in my lunch break. And I'm doing a glutes day, which means it's gonna be a tough one <laughs> because they're always the most tiring. I wanna get new headphones as well. If you guys have any recommendations of headphones, I was looking at the Sony, the ones that are like that whole code, it's like MX, I think it's like M4 or something at the end of it. They're the ones I was looking at and I've literally been looking at them for ages because my boyfriend has them. Cause I really want some like good noise canceling, high quality ones. Like I have Beats, these aren't, these aren't good. I'm gonna be straight up. I feel like Beats were like a thing from like, 2014 <laughs> and these aren't good and they don't sit around my entire ear they sit like on it and i don't like that i want ones that sit over over my ears and i have tried out the sony blah 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 m4 ones and i really really like them so i'm leaning towards them but if you guys either have those and you like them or if you have recommendations it would be best if they were ones that aren't super expensive <laughs> because i'm looking at like the 200 pound mark i'm not looking at like i don't know i feel like i was looking at the airpod maxes and i was like oh that's 500 pounds not doing that so yeah i just i'm i'm over these i've had these probably since like 2014 and all i've done is to like change these pads because the pads get really like beat up so i've changed the pads but they're the same old same old beats and they're not very good <laughs> if you have any recommendations or if you have used those like sony blah blah, blah m4 ones let me know again i literally saw i was thinking about this i've been thinking about this month and then i saw destiny literally speak about it like last week she has the sony blah blah, blah m4s and she really likes them so maybe i'll just lean towards them but yeah i'm gonna go to the gym i will probably listen to audiobook while i'm there and then check in with you once i finished it i'm gonna be so honest i've been sat like looking across the road from me i just didn't unhaul and when i unhaul books i either give them to this like random woman that lives down my road that likes the books that i get rid of or there's one of those little free libraries literally in the front garden of the house opposite me and i usually put them in there and i don't know what it is but i get such bad anxiety with like walking out with my little stack of books to like put them in i don't literally no one cares literally no one cares but there's a part of me that's like been putting it off because i don't want to walk out there and do it <laughs> I have got like 20 odd books. I was gonna do it in like increments. But again, why? No one cares. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go force myself to do that. There's not a lot of room in it. I'm looking at it right now. Like there's not tons of room in it, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I'll be able to fit. Anyway, if you could also hear knocking, my next door neighbor, I don't know what's happening. I feel like they're putting up a picture or something. I don't know, man, but it's, anyway. Oh my God, so much is coming out of my mouth with no actual complete sentences. I want to check in with you. I have finished Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. I was going to say Rebecca, Rebecca Yaros then. Rebecca Ross. And I loved it. 
I loved it. I thought it was really good. I literally, it's like 4 p.m. now. I went to the gym, got back from the gym, all of that jazz, and I've just been listening to the audiobook while I've been doing my work. So good. I'm gonna give this four stars. I think that it's, I don't think any of these books would ever be five stars to me because it's lacking that little something like i'm not obsessed with the characters it's not like akatar throne of glass where you feel like they're your literal friends <laughs> which maybe that's a me thing i don't know but i did really really like this i think it was it stands on the same level to me as the first book the main thing that i heard about this book was that people preferred the first one and that this one was like almost substantially lower rating wise like most people that gave divine rivals like i don't know four or five stars were giving this like three but i for me they stand on the same level to me i don't think there's one that i prefer over the other really at all this was so good i am part of me is sad that it's over part of me loves duology like can we go back to the days where we would just have duologies because i'm all for a long ass like fantasy series for example throne of glass akatar i love that sort of thing but i do love a little duology because i feel like every time i want to read a fantasy book i have to almost commit myself to like 10 books and <laughs> i don't always want to do that i don't always want to do that and so little duologies like this stunning i'm i just i had a really good time it was so fun it was so quick the audiobook is also really good i would say if you have the opportunity if you have the facilities i would have the audiobook on while you read because it's still quite nice to actually physically read it because obviously they write letters to each other and there's quite a few letters obviously typed out in this and i feel like they're quite nice to see with your eyes <laughs> which is like the most creepy way i could have worded that anyway really liked this four stars basically no complaints i think what would have made it a five star is just like that almost visceral connection to the characters i feel like again i will harp on about it but all of my five star reads i basically get attached and obsessed to the characters and think that they're my literal friend um, which didn't happen with this but i still really loved it this is a really great series if you haven't read it i would highly recommend it's like YA but slightly older YA they're like 19 18 19 in these books it's a really cool concept with the whole like writing letters to each other but through this like wardrobe but through these magical typewriters there's a war going on there's gods involved and the actual gods themselves I just think were really interesting characters like they're not portrayed the way that I thought they would be and I just I really liked it the friendships in this are great it's really easy to read the writing is gorgeous but it is very easily digestible like it is easy to read like you could just glide through it yeah I really liked these books I'm really Really glad that I picked them up. I would highly recommend this series if you haven't already read it. As always, I'm gonna do a little wrap up of the books that we have read this week. I also, <laughs> I literally have my F1 hoodie behind me. I realized in my clip where I was talking, I think I was talking about Collided actually. I literally have my Lando hoodie. I had like my LN04 hoodie behind me and now I have this one. I have a lot of F1 hoodies. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap up what we read this week. So the first one that I read was Ricochet by Kristen Becker Ritchie. I think I gave this four stars, that sounds right. I really liked this. I much preferred it to the first one. I think I'm gonna love this series the more I get into it because this one was very much more focused on character development, let's just say. I'm obviously not gonna give anything away because these are all books in the middle of series, but I liked the character development in this one. I think that they are becoming more likable characters to me at least i'm liking them more as they're sort of addressing their issues and almost learning how to be better people to each other so i really liked this i again think i'm gonna love the rest of the series so i'm very excited to read the next one i then read collided i'm so glad i read this again shout out tierney i love her she knows that but she got me this book for christmas i'm a changed woman because of you this was so good <laughs> This was so good. I feel like I have to preface this with the fact that like, maybe you need to take that with a pinch of salt. I don't think this is the best thing ever written. It's definitely cliche. It's definitely cringy. There's a lot of cringe in this book. And I feel like that's why it wasn't a five star because I got five star feels in the middle of this. And then I was like, no, I'm actually being cringed out. But a lot of the things, I think specifically the things that Liam, our love interest in this was saying, this is an F1 romance. I just much preferred the tropes in this one. This was kind of like a friends to lovers situation. I think that Liam as a person, very cocky, but still a very nice person. I feel like no, in the first one I didn't like as a person like he was cocky but almost in like a rude full of himself way and Liam is full of himself but he's still like funny has banter clearly very much like Sophie our main character I just think that their dynamic was a lot better and I loved their story and I just really liked Liam as a character and I really liked Sophie as a character I just think it was really fun again it's not an absolute masterpiece like for example when I think of masterpieces of romances I think the seven year slip I think the bodyguard i think behind the net the fake out things like that the right move oh my god yours truly everything like that it's not to that level but <laughs> i still very much enjoyed myself reading this and i'm so glad that i picked it up because like i said 
first book was not it for me babe it really wasn't and this one has like solidified the fact that i'm gonna definitely carry on with this series because this was so cute i really liked it and then i read ruthless vows i'm not gonna go on about this one because i just gave you like a five minute spiel on my feelings and thoughts and feelings on this this was really fun really liked this series i'm glad that i've managed to tick off a series but i'm also kind of sad that it's over again bring back duologies please I'm begging because I love a fantasy duology. Really cute, really, really highly recommend this series. Romance, fantasy, kind of lighter fantasy, really fun kind of fantasy with their little letters and the war and everything. Great, this was this was so good. So we've had a four star, a 4.5 and a four. I don't think I've ever got that in a reading series vlog. I don't think ever. No, I'm thinking of the one that I did a few episodes ago where I did like, I think I read Elsie Silver and obviously Elf Elsie Silver, she's gonna get five stars every time from me. But even in that one, I don't think we had as good of a turnout as this. This was so fun, this was so good. And I've ticked off some books that I was really, really, really wanting to get to. I'm thinking for the next episode of this, bear with me, I really wanna do an episode where I read sequels to books that I didn't like. <laughs> because I do have a few series where I really didn't like the first book or I really didn't like the first couple of books and I want to continue just to see because I think it would be fun and I think it would be interesting. I already have a few books in mind. Maybe if you've watched my worst books of last year, you will know <laughs> which ones I'm hinting at and I already own like sequels to these books. So it's like, they're already on my physical TBR. We'll read them together and we'll see. Maybe it will go upwards. Maybe I'll hate them just as much. But if that's something you would like to see, let me know because I think that would be really, really fun to film and to do as like my next one of ticking off series I'm in the middle of but I read books where I hated the first one I think it'll be interesting anyway that is it for this vlog I hope you have enjoyed I am gonna go brave the outdoors and go put some books in the little free library I'm gonna do it babe I'm gonna <sighs> why am I scared why am I scared it's literally walking across the road anyway <laughs> I'm gonna go. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for being here. Leave a comment if you do want me to do that video where I read sequels to books I hate because I think it'll be fun. But yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you whenever I next see you.